Hey guys, how's it going? Ugh. Hey guys, how's it going? Ugh. I hate all these parentheses in Lab and Path, man. We got so many of them. So much yellow. <laughs> I don't know if they do any questions here in some of this human DNA testing either, but. Trying to stay consistent, but it's like oh, every CPT code has something to highlight. And it's all gibberish. How's everybody doing? Sorry, it's 630 here in Arizona. I usually try not to do this too late, but I just couldn't get here any earlier today. Been catching up on real life work. And emails and stuff. Tutoring seems to be caught up. Um, so that's cool. I got a couple tomorrow morning. Oh, lab and path. Oh, I'm through with muscular skeletal. But all I got to do is take the pictures and then post that section up. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to move on to lab and path and then we'll do medicine. And I'll be sure and do this lab and path on YouTube so that you guys can see how I prep it up. More so than I did muscular skeletal, for sure. I think I only ended up with one live on muscular skeletal. But I'll, I'll do a lot more on lab path. <laughs> yeah, I bet a lot of you have been for sure. Let's see. Hey, Jill, how's it going? Code linkage. Hey, America. Um. Code linkage is all based on um, your parentheticals and your guidelines. So if it says you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. A lot of that you'll learn, too, um, in real-life coding. Once you get a job, what I am an expert in is how to pass your medical coding and certification exam. Linkage is really not something you really need to worry so much about during your medical coding certification exams. The answers are already done for you. They're linked together if you need to use them together. And a lot of times the scenarios are not real life too. So even if they're supposed to be linkaged, it's not available in your answer. Um, so we just have to pick the best answer for what's provided for us. So yeah, um, the guidelines that I did for the ICD-10 book, it's 150 pages of everything that you would need to know for um, guidelines for an entire career. Um, I shouldn't have made it that big. I really should have made it more towards the exam. I wasn't thinking when I did it. I was just trying to help, but um, I'll work on that for this this year. Um, but that would be a big benefit um, is learning all that, that I put all the examples. I did screenshots of what they would look like in the book, out of the book. That kind of thing would be very helpful for learning about linkages. Did you have a question in specific? Um, a type of example that I can help explain because doing just a general overall, I don't even know where to start because <laughs> there's so much that can link together. Let me know if you got like one particular example of something. You're getting over COVID. Oh no. Ascented care. I hope you have um, get over this quite, 
easily. Please let me know if you do have a question. You said, I have a question. So if you have a question, just post it. I'll answer it. No worries. Happy to help. Toot toot. She said she's been waiting for this. I'm so sorry. I'm a little late. I just got an email and I had to write it up and send it to the lawyer about Travis. So I was always, I'm too wordy even in email. So I was trying not to be too wordy to take up too much of her time. But then you know how parents are. We always want to explain everything out a lot. Um, <clears throat> so glad you're working on Lab and Path at the moment. I just asked a question on Discord. Okay, great, Tiff. I'll work on that. Maya, hey, girl. I asked you a question on Discord, and before I announced something, I wanted to make sure it was going to be okay with you first. Let me check my messages. I don't have that yet. Okay. Yep, I will do. Yep, 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 yep. So, yes, I do have a question out to somebody in our Discord group, just in case. Maya, if you could answer that one, that would be awesome. And if you haven't joined um, and you need support with tutoring, mentoring, um, want to know where to freaking start with medical coding, Download the Discord app and then click my link in this bio here on TikTok. It'll join you straight into our Discord group, which is Medical Coding by Jen. Um, it's really cool. There is a number if you need just the number, the 6243. This is our room <coughs> or rooms. It's our server is what they call it. And we have rooms that are attached to the server. Like if you just want to do practice questions, if you want to know what to expect on exam day, if you want ENM resources, CPT code resources, even other certifications like RISC or CCS, CCO, whatever, I have them all here. Anatomy, you can see all the people that we've helped, including the ones that passed today. So excited. We had a couple pass today that um, we've been working closely with for a long time now, so so helpful, um, and it's really wonderful to see them grow and progress. We even have job resources and CEU for continuing education afterwards and off-topic items and that kind of stuff, so it's cool. In fact, one of the people that passed her exam today that... <clears throat> That was so grateful for passing her exam, she decided to go buy tutoring for you guys, and it would be her. <laughs> so, y'all, please say thank you to her. She passed, and um, she did buy two sessions of tutoring. And I have some people I need to add the names to um, in there, um, and I don't have it. Uh, the list because she just did this today. So I got a so Friday, I will draw two people to win free tutoring thanks to her. Um, and I will do that on Friday. I just got to enter in some more names in the drawing because I'm getting emails as we speak. So if you want to enter in the drawing for free tutoring, thanks to please email me. I'm sorry, I'm trying to bring it up for you. <clears throat> at coding by Jen at gmail.com right there. Just put in the subject line. Sorry, my touch screens. Um to that you want to be entered in the raffle for tutoring. And then I have another raffle going for um free sections of my CPT book. And I think everybody would probably want to win either or or right. So I'll just if you emailed me already, I'll just enter you into both drawings. Um, but if you specifically just want one over the other, email me and put it in the header. That helps me out a whole lot. Something like that that just says raffle. That's great. That way I can just keep it straight because I get emails every day on other subjects. And then those I can enter in quickly. So that super helps. Thank you so much. And in fact, oops, she is awesome. Uh, 
I think she even has, and I don't know how to make her, I was trying to make her, here we go, manage, there we go, add her to my moderator pile of people. Hey, is Betty around and Twinkle? How's that going? Let's see, let me check the rest of this. Um, I just asked a question in Discord under COD, is that COC maybe, or? In what room? She might have asked that. CPC, maybe that room. Woo! I mean, people are sharing uh, copies of their books and notes and stuff in that Discord room. Please, um, y'all, if you haven't joined Discord, it's all 100% free. There's no tracking. Nobody's going to be sending you emails or trying to sell you stuff. So, okay. About a code. Tiffany did. Did she put it in the CPT code resource room? Not sure. No. Okay. Where would the question be? Maybe it's in main chat. We are live. There's Twinkle. <clears throat> just a, I just don't know where the question is. I got too many rooms. <laughs> I'll find it eventually. Um, I'm on page 625 right now. 625. Of course, they'll let you reschedule. Yep. Um, they were trying to even get me to reschedule the day I showed up for my exam because I had prior year books. And they're like, you should reschedule. You could miss some questions. And I'm like, eh, it's all right. I'm ready to go. I wasn't even there to pass the exam. I was there to audit the exam. I wanted to know what was on it. <clears throat> but yes, you can always reschedule. Some points if you're really close to your exam date they may charge you a hundred bucks depends on um how much you can sweet talk somebody into it um i'm sure there's exceptions for uh health issues yeah. thanks rach um it was about antigen on page 6.30. All right. We're close. We're close. Oh, yeah. Oh, those antigen equivalents. Yes. Those antigen equivalents. I haven't gotten here to these yet. And I don't think I worked them up last year. So it looks like we've got an antigen equivalent. We have an, an antigen Equivalent, but this one's saying complete. So that's a little different. They're going to have some guidelines, these guidelines that are going to play a big part of answering those questions about those codes. Um, you'll need to make sure you go through these guidelines, carry over whatever information they're saying to those codes. Um, some of it will be like Greek and not make any sense, I'm sure. Yeah, ambiguous. Yeah, resolution. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, so they're italicized. So the gene is going to be the italicized in there. So that's cool. All right, at least they're specific about that. No worries, no worries. You found the answer? <laughs> yep. Y'all thank her very much. So she bought two sessions for you guys, 100 bucks. Just, yeah, really nice of her. The email address is, you can do it to either one. I have both, but either coding by Jen at gmail.com or medical coding by Jen. Whichever one I have, oh, I have them all. So coding by Jen or either one, medical coding by Jen. Oh gosh, my touch screens, I hate it. Or that one, either one. 
But the email link is right here in TikTok, so that's super easy. Is if you go to TikTok, go to my bio, you just click on the bubble with my face on it, and then the email pops up right there. I have the link right there. You just click on that, and it'll automatically open up your email and send me one. All you got to do is put the subject in the subject line. So super easy. And also that link tree thing, the black dark line with, with the symbol right there, that's got all the links to everything like Discord, um, Pinhurst, not that I ever post on it, Instagram, copies of my notes, videos, um, our study group, and um, my website with the workshops and tutoring. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, Twinkle. It's good to see you. Yeah, and there's a lot of it, my. She says that you're welcome, everyone. Miss Jen is super awesome, and all her tricks and strategies work very good. So it, it's not just one thing. It's not just the process of elimination. It's not just looking for coding irregularities. Um. I employ quite a few little tools that will help us out in um, negating that test because you have to remember it's not a skill that you need to pass the exam. The skill is c medical coding. You don't need to know how to medical code to pass the exam because you're not coding. The exam is already coded for you. You just have to be able to pick out the right answer. So. That's where the fun comes in by not reading the questions, number one, and letting the codes tell you. Because the exam is more so based off what, do you know how to use the book is, is what they want to know. Can you find your parentheticals? Do you know what any of this means when it tells you something underneath the code or the differences when they all start out the same like H? LA class, HLA class. Well, what's the difference? One of them's typing of just the one typing. This one is, is typing one and two typing. So we've got that difference right there um, between these two codes. And going through this book ahead of time and noting that one difference between each code so you can make sure in your question and just search. I left my pens out too long. Um, search the question for only your one word differences. That is way more helpful than anything else. You don't need to know who the patient is, why they're there, what's going on with them. All we would need to know is if are we doing one and two typing or just one typing. Super cool there. And then the next set is going to be uh, just two typing. So we don't know what we're doing, but we do know there's a difference between drawing a lab test for one and two typing or just one typing or just two typing. So you'll just check the question for the word typing and see the words before it and after it to verify that you're only doing one or the other or both. That's it. And reading the rest of the question is only going to give you brain fatigue during the middle of the exam and slow you down so that the cases that are at the end of the exam, you won't have time to read. And you'll have to, not that we should be reading, but still. Um, they're going to be longer, and you're going to need to be able to find the answer um, instead of them being short questions. They're going to be longer up notes that you may have to search a lot of text for some information. So that kind of stuff is super helpful. So it's just a lot of different tools, a lot of different tools and things like knowing that if the CPT code has the word each means that you'll have to multiply it 
or code it twice if you're doing um, doing multiple of the same test and you would know if you were going to multiply it if it had a plus symbol in front of it if you're going to code it twice by writing the same number down twice if you had two you need to know your little bits of rules like if it doesn't have a plus symbol in front of it then I don't times it I would do the code twice those things that I teach you the bare minimums of it least exactly what you need to know during the exam what would be a coding irregularity those kinds of things are super helpful so I wish I had a one-all thing made up that would tell you exactly what you need to know but it'll take a couple of times of listening to my lives and participating in these um two-hour lives that I do here on TikTok. I do them three times a week, two hours long, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you stick with me for a few weeks, probably at least four weeks, you'll eventually hear every little thing that you might need to know. Or you can watch the replays, which I forgot to put Monday's replay on. Ooh, I needed a reminder. I forgot all about it. Um, up on YouTube so that y'all could watch it if you happen to miss Monday's. Um, so I need to go do that. But, um, yeah, I need to make up something with every tip and trick on it on one sheet. That's probably what I should have done instead of doing every guideline that I did in the ICD-10 book. But I'm learning just as much as y'all are and had great success. I mean, y'all really made April's month amazing for me. I think I've had... Close to 30 people pass for April. I mean, I was already at 25 and I'm adding the two from today. So we're at 27 just for one month. And I'm not sure how many people that even charge for courses get that many in one course to pass when they take for one whole month. So I'm kind of proud of it. I have no idea what their statistics are, but I don't charge for my education like teaching here. I like to do it all for free. But if you absolutely want a one-on-one -on -one with me and um, tutoring, we can do that. Absolutely. Um, you can schedule that at my website, medicalcodingbygen.com. But I like showing everybody how to do it for free, how to prep your books and teach you all my little tips and tricks during the lives and stuff. Sure do. I know AAPC has you with enough money and charges and billing um, to last you a lifetime. So I'm just trying to help out because I realized that when they gave away those free courses, I thought about maybe getting some more certificates. I don't know. I was just bored because we had COVID and that shut down a lot of my audits. I was still working, but working independently on my own. I've got it down to a science at my job job. So I'm always looking for something else to do um, to keep up the challenges of the career. So I had worked up and learned how to do a CHAPS audit, which I do in my spare time, um, nights and weekends or whatever, when, when, when they need it. So home health agencies have to go through a a CHAPS audit, and I figured out how to do that and helped a bunch of groups around here pass their audits, especially the ones that failed. And so when AAPC gave away their free COC and CPB and all those courses during COVID, I took them. And I was like, man, if, th if I had paid three grand for that and then tried to take a certification exam, off of that, I would have been so upset, and I thought it was pretty cruel during COVID to, I mean, charge $3,000 for a CPC course, which they didn't give away, but then if it was just like the COC course, and then they were expecting you to pass the exam, I thought it was pretty rough, so I started making a TikTok on it, and here we are, but I'm, um, like I said, very happy to teach y'all for free. Let me check messages and I'm pulling up my questions for today right now. I got some more of Betty's uh, cardiology ones that were super fun the other night. Monday night was a really fun um, 
sun, 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 night of tutoring. Let's see. May the Fourth Be With You, I Am a Star Wars Child. It is one of the only movies my parents ever took me to. I was born in 71, so when Star Wars came out, my parents actually took me, and we didn't go social places. We might have went to Catfish Cabin to eat out for dinner, or we went fishing or camping, but we, we never went to movies or malls or any anything like that at all, but they took me to Star Wars. Lord, and the thing is about the only movie we ever went to. They took me to rock concerts like Genesis and um, Leonard Skinner, but they we just didn't do movies. That just wasn't something parents were interested in. But they took me to Star Wars, and I've loved it ever since because it was special. It was something neat. So, yes, I am a Star Wars geek. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Somebody's laughing at me giggles. Hey, A. Banks. Yeah, you need to make sure you try to get rid of the cough, too, before you take your exam, if you're going to do it in person, because it'll um, disrupt the other people taking the exam. Some people get a nervous cough when they're just nervous. Oh, my gosh, it was awful. Um, studies show that if you are sucking on a peppermint during an exam, you will score higher. So I always recommend everybody to take a bunch of peppermints with them when they go. By the way, yellow and green, wear in those colors. Also, studies show you get higher scores with those. So please wear yellow and green or something with those colors, even if it's a fashion ring or a bracelet, something that's got yellow and green, <laughs> whatever, something that you would see. Usually rooms painted in yellow and green is what the study showed that um, people scored better on exams when they were in a room with those colors. So that's kind of interesting. It can't help, or, you know, can't hurt anyway. What will Miss Jen do if she was the one taking the exam. Yep. Yep. You've got to keep that in your head. Think the entire exam as you're taking it. What would Jen do if this was her taking the exam? And I show y'all exactly how I would take the attack each question. Is this propaganda or is this something else? <laughs> I did that. <laughs> She had an intervention during her exam. You're very welcome, Tiff. Yep, I will absolutely be going over those um, examples. I hope that was helpful. At least, you know, type one, type two is going to be our differences. These are high resolutions where our other ones, the other set group is going to be low resolution. So that's another little thing we're going to mark up with a different color. This is that typing with low resolution, then it's going to start over all over again where we got one and two again, but this is going to be high resolution. So we have two differences we need to pay attention to. And then um, we'll go through and just do the one typing and then the next one will be the two typing, type two down here. So those kind of things are just noting all those differences will definitely make a difference on your exam because you're not going to have time to sit here and rationalize What's the differences between all of these during your exam? That's why I like to go through and do all that ahead of time. We'll mark it up and mark it exactly what I needed to know right underneath it. I'm doing a revision of an eye muscle or I'm doing a release of an eye. So am I doing revise or release? There's my one issue and then I'll go search my question. Super handy dandy to do this before. Packer colors, <laughs> Terry. I didn't even know that. Tennessee, we got some orange, but not yellow and green. Maybe a mixture. Tell me about it, though, that now. Hey, Heather, how's it going? Hey, PJ, I just sent you your free um, section that you won. And plus a little extra bonus. So I know you were torn between two sections and didn't know what to get. So I made a decision for you. <laughs> and I sent you a little something extra. Congratulations on winning the free section. Hey, moms or Momo, 
whatever I'm calling you this week. <laughs> How's it going? We're just playing around here with Lab and Path. I am getting ready to mark this section up. The first thing I'm doing is going through even the guidelines. If they have a parentheses with something written in it, I'm highlighting it. Whatever it is, that's my first run through. Each CPT code that might have a parentheses, I'm going to run through it and do that. I'm going to mark my do's, my do nots. If I see anything in the guidelines that say anything about um, when to use a modifier, when not to use a modifier, I'm going to mark that. Um, I've not seen any of these gene classes done on the exam recently, but um, forever on the exam talked about. So hopefully we won't have anything like that. But they love to talk about the reproduction, like um, when you're fertilizing in, um, in vitro fertilization or sperm washing. They really love that section more so than they love these that are there. Um, but yeah, I need to write up like a top 10 uh, document for each section, which, which ones are they gravitating to. But I got to get through this book first. And I'm on my last two sections, lab path and then medicine. Definitely get through all this stuff. But if, um, if a CPT code has a parentheses, highlight that. That's my recommendation. Other people will tell you different, but I find that that's more helpful than anything because it matches what's on the exam questions. I find like this one, they're not going to call it uh, a rib, whatever. They're going to call it the vitamin B2. It's exactly what's going to be in that question. And that's more helpful than anything is exactly being able to match up what was in the question word, word wise. So. Highlight those throughout the entire book, everything that's there. If I'm trying to find something with some parentheticals, where are they? You don't have a lot of them in Lab and Path? I guess not, because it's either you're ordering this test or you're not. We're gonna make we're gonna make note of this being direct, amplified, or a quant. Um, those three things we're gonna change the colors. On stuff like that it's all the same test but it's about how they drew the test did they do a direct probe an amplified probe or a quant it, those kind of things are going to be more helpful it's not just picking out the test it's picking out how did they collect the sample for the test that we need to make the notes of the differences and then when they have something that says like this, and the parenthetical says, use this code with that other code, we're going to mark it with blue line and two stars in blue. That's what I do. You can use any color you want, but I like to make notes when they tell me to use a code with a code. So they're saying this code will go with the O2. So that's helpful. In this one, do they have an each? <clears throat> each. So if they have the word and the plus sign, each and a plus sign, then that means we can do a times by it. There's a few like um, in the hernia digestive system that are the plus symbols that we wouldn't times. We would just add them because they don't have the word each. But other than that, there's a couple in muscular skeletal too, but I have those marked in my notes. If it doesn't have a times and the circle each isn't circled, then we don't. We do times them if we've got those two things matching up. That's super helpful. Hey, Taco. Hey, Kim. Ooh, we've got lots of Kims in here tonight. You're welcome, PJ. I kind of have to send like when you win a section of my notes or something and, and it's not coming straight from Etsy and I have to send it to you manually, I have to send it like a few PDF pages at a time because Gmail won't let me send the whole thing all at once. There's all these file size restrictions and I'm not techie enough to know how to do the zip files and send stuff probably appropriately. So I just sent you four emails. <laughs> oh, well. 
with four downloads. But anyway, it gets the job done, right? I have changed how I mark my books 3,000 times. Each chapter is a hot mess. Oh, no. Well, marking is just half the battle. Sometimes, you know, what's more important is probably that one word difference that you would put underneath each CPT code, you know, right here. Just putting that this is direct, this, and then this one writing the word amplified, and then this one writing the word quant. I know it's silly because it's way over here and it's okay, but if you put it right underneath there, I mean, all you got to do is grab that one word and go to your question. We've got, you know, diagnostic, uh, okay, one with contrast, one without. You just run to your question and look for contrast. Super easy. I like it instead of going through the thing and reading your CPT code descriptor. I really like having the one word differences. That's just helpful, I think. Um, plus, you're saving on eye movement. You're not having to go any further. You're already looking at the number because you're verifying from your test booklet that this is the number that's correct. Instead of having to move your eyes over here to see which you've got the answer right there underneath it. And then you can pick out the right answer by searching the question. I don't know. Sometimes eye movement. And if you save all the time of your eye movement throughout the entire book through the question, it'll save you some real minutes at the end of the exam. And time is your worst enemy during that exam. I can't tell you how many people took it even just this weekend who did not get through with the exam, even with all my tips, even though they know they weren't supposed to be reading the entire question, they find themselves going back into old ways during the exam because they want to do it properly. So they end up with um, no time to finish the rest of the exam. And there are so many obstacles in those questions. And their goal is to make you slow down and make you not finish. You can only miss 30 questions. And if you have to fill in all of the 10 E&M questions at the end that are your cases, that's a lot. You have to guess really quickly, and that's rough. You don't want to throw. Um, you answered all the beginning questions really well because you know you spent time on them. But then you get down to the last 25 that you have to guess on. And you just start bubbling in the rest of your exam. And then that ruins your work that you did on all those other questions. I just think it's, you know, go through that test booklet, answer the ones you know right away, instantly. Second time you go through the exam, then slow down and take your time on the ones that you absolutely have no idea and work on those. But if you can go through that exam really quickly and just, Skim some of the answers only and see which ones. Oh, I know that one. I know that code. Oh, that's Jen's favorite um, chronic care code. I know all I need for that one is time. How much time? And then go answer that one really quick because you know exactly where that is in your book. And um, you know exactly all you need. You see something that's got the 15 code with the 17 code. Oh, I know if I'm over 54 minutes. We're going to use that answer, right? Go look at your time. Is it 50, over 54 minutes? Then great. You know what your answer is. Things like that you've seen me do a million times during these lives. You can answer those questions in 15 seconds and move on to something else. The rest of it, you can just go back to and do those later when you want to spend more time with them. Anyway, I could sit here all day highlighting. Let's get to some practice questions. <clears throat> could you go over again what you meant by you circling the word each yeah so it, a lot of people have issues with not knowing which codes yeah. Let me get some paper that's all travi stuff like which codes can i go like um, like nine nine two one five. I was just talking about. Can we times that by two? 
No, we can't. But ones that we can do, and the only ones we should be doing, I find one. Of course, I won't be able to find one. Hmm, we gotta have some in neuro, don't we? Oh, let me go to medicine. I bet I don't have any books up. I don't have any wrote up back here in medicine. That'll be easier to find them because I don't have all those notes. All right. So the ones that we can multiply are the ones with the plus symbol in front of them. A lot of teachers don't even tell you that. Um, it has to have this plus symbol in front of it. And some people don't know that this one, if we were coding multiple of them, we would just write the code twice and add a modifier to the end saying that for the reason why we're doing it twice, we got twins or something, you know, whatever. But the ones that we do times two, times three, times four are the ones with the plus symbol. But the plus symbol also needs to make sure that you have the word each. Sometimes, and a lot of times throughout the book, the word each is super handy dandy and it's the first word, which is lovely. We love that. Now I can mark this one as one that I can multiply. Sometimes the CPT book, for some unknown reason, AMA, I swear I'm going to get on their board one of these days and help them. They have a board. I When I when I applied to have a franchise license so I can show the codes with their descriptions, um, I noticed that they have a board that you can get on and you can help them write the codes and descriptions. If I ever did decide I wanted more work to do, <laughs> this is one that I'd, I'd rewrite right there is this plus symbol has the word each all the way like five words in. And it doesn't mean that it's it does the second through the 14 lesions all together in one code. It means each up to 14 lesions. If there's 15 lesions, you're going to move down and you're going to go to this 04 code right here that does the 15 or more. <clears throat> but that thing is worded wrong. It's just awful because it makes you think that you're coding all. If you have three lesions, you're going to build this one and then you're going to build this one times two. If you have 10 lesions, you're going to build this one once and then you're going to do this one times nine. That'll equal 10. Anyway. If you have 15 or more, you're just going to build this one. So if I have 99 lesions that I removed, we're only going to build just this one code with one number. It gets confusing enough as it is, much less having the CPT code descriptor written wrong. But anytime you see the word each means each individual one that you're going to build after this, you're going to hit times. So times six would be times five, times four would end up being five whole lesions. Anyway, it's confusing enough, but you need the plus symbol and the word each to make this work as something that you can hit the time. You can do times on. Uh, they got any more around here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See right here? We've got the word each. So this is for each additional 60 minutes. Now, there'll probably be a guideline here that'll tell you how much of that 60 minutes needs to go by before you can actually bill it. Because I'm sure you can't do like one minute and bill for 60 minutes. You, you have to figure out how much. And that'll be up here in this guideline up here. So they get a little tricky um, when they do say each 60 minutes. They're going to divide up the time and only give you like 15 minutes and see if you will pick that each or not. But that's a whole nother issue that I'll teach you all about. But this means we can do each. So if you go through the entire book <laughs> and mark all your plus ones, if they have an each as times, that will save you. You also know that you're not going to be doing 
your bilaterals with these. So they will not get the modifier 50. Um, if you're doing multiple of these or your 51 modifier, you won't be using those modifiers, 50 and 51, with these. <clears throat> so that's handy to know because if you are looking at some answers and you see that they're using a plus symbol code with a modifier 51 as a possible answer, before you even go to the question, you don't need to worry about it. You can mark that out as a possible answer because it's not going to ever happen. We won't be doing 51 with that ever. Especially that's important in Integmentary. And what I did there was I wrote things up like, and it, I don't know if it makes any sense to you guys, but I put up at the top plus symbol equals times equals no 50 or 51 modifier. And I just put it every other page so that I have it up there so that I don't do it, especially in Integmentary, because it can be super confusing. I can also write like do nots all the way up. Don't be using those on those add-on codes that we build times two. Whatever makes sense for you guys, you can do. Or you can just get my notes and copy them. <laughs> but I like y'all to do it yourselves. That way you'll see the codes, work the codes, and know them better than just copying notes. But they're there if you've got time crunch for taking tests. Where are we at? Let's see. Is there any times? As, oh, please, for the love of goodness, be sure and go through every one of these codes that are marked in red where they're out of sequence because your exam is 100% just numbers, except for your anatomy, five anatomy questions. Um, and you're just going to be running from number to number. And there's nothing worse than getting here to where the number's supposed to be and it not be here. And then they tell you to go to the, some range of where it would be. And you got to go figure out what page it's on. We're on page 795. These codes are really over there on 807. So I got to go all the way over there. I put down which column number they're on, one or two, but you don't even have to do that. Just at least put a page number down so you can go find it quickly. Um, that's super helpful for the exam because there certainly is a lot of them. When a code tells you not to use a certain code with another code, I like to mark them with two red stars so that it reminds me to look when I'm presented with a question. At this do not verify none of the answers have that code with one of these, and that's a whole range of 26 different codes. And I verify that none of the answers have that. I guarantee you one of the answers will have one of these. They're just checking to see if you know how to use the book or not. And you can go on and get rid of that answer, get rid of it. So it's not even one of your options anymore. It's done half the work for you. <clears throat> that with the process of elimination, looking for these coding irregularities, normally get you down to a 50-50 shot, if not showing you exactly what the answer can only be because it's the only one that doesn't have one of those numbers there. Then you know it can only be that answer. That's super helpful. It's like winning the lotto when you get a question like that. I love it. I <laughs> know. I don't know how they think you know that. I don't... <laughs> It's fine, D. It's all right. We need more laparoscopic uh, hepatic surgery codes. Yep, be careful what you ask for. Our ICD-10 book is already a decade old. The World Health Organization has already adopted the ICD-11. And those codes will change here in the United States. We're just the last country in the world that will do anything new in medicine. And we will be doing it in the next couple of years. <clears throat> and our codes right now in ICD-10 are 11, no, seven codes. Yes, seven codes long, numbers long, whatever you want to call it, numbers and letters. But they're going to go to 11 to 25 
long because they're going to add in a whole bunch more specificity and combination codes. So, whoo, if it was ever a time to get your CPC, get it done now <laughs> before ICD-10 changes. Canada and <clears throat> all the countries that have universal health care for all their citizens because they want to take care of their population so that they don't have to pay for services once they get disabled due to untreated medical conditions. Um, they will, um, they have already been on ICD-10 for a long time and they do have better codes and more specificity than we do. We're just slow at adopting them. We do adopt everything from those countries. That's who invents all this stuff and the guidelines. Um, we're just slow about it. We're slow. And AAPC has already been sharing some information like what the diabetes codes is now, like E11 and E10, and what it will be in ICD-11. They've already given us that information. And just storing that can really help your, um, your job. I mean, I doubled my income, doubled my income when ICD-9 switched over to ICD-10 just because I said, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> And I had no clue, but I, I knew how to Google and I'd figure it out. So y'all can do the same. Start gathering that information. Super handy dandy. All right. I just started the AAPC course and I feel like I'm way in over my head. Yeah, the course is not very helpful no matter what anyway. As far as I've never taken the CPC course. I've looked at the COC um, CPB and some other courses from them, but I can't imagine. Just skip <sighs> all of it except for your review questions. You'll have 10 review questions and then a chapter review. That's what is more helpful for you than anything else in, in, in the whole course. So, um, all those anatomy videos and code by yourself when they don't give you multiple choice. That's just busy work to make you feel like you paid for something. Don't worry about all that. Oh my gosh, my kids are. James. He's playing a, an online game with his older brother and they're getting all into it and fussing. Not at each other, but at all the other gamers. They're playing, um, Dota 2, if anybody's heard of that game. The winners of these tournaments win like $11 million. It's ridiculous. I don't know how they do it. And every keyboard button is a different movement or a different spell. It's not just a controller. It's every keyboard button. I don't know how they do that. He can't do his spelling words for the week, but he can definitely maneuver that keyboard like a pro. Good gracious. Okay, where's my questions for today? Did I do that one yet? I'm looking for... Yep, we did that one. Because we were riding that cowboy or something. <laughs> okay, that unless you were in the live on Monday, that will not make sense. Sorry. Okay. All right. Where are we at? I think we're here. I think we're there. Okay. Yeah. Where is my? <clears throat> I'll show you what I mean about the course real quick. Because if you're in their course, I've got some more courses here on my bricky poo. Switch, 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 switch. Don't be looking at the answers. Okay. All right. All right. Let me get this quick. I'm not sure what I've got on the server or what I've got on the brick, but I know they're on the brick. Push that in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, where are we at? So no, I'm going here. Nope. I'm gonna go right here. See all this COC stuff? Yep. When you're when you're in their course, their their chapter tips and crap are just their study guide. That's all this is, but that's not really helpful. Um what is helpful? Let's see. Ooh. Yeah, the slides, that's just this stuff that they make you spend so much time on, coding like this stuff, isn't helpful at all. <clears throat> and because they're making you do it without <clears throat> without multiple choice answers. And so then they're making you trying to show you that you would code all this stuff by yourself. And then they tell you the answers and then all this garbage rationale. You know how long it would take you to decipher all this one thing? It's awful. And it doesn't help you with the exam questions. What you need are just the exam questions. So where am I at? No, I don't need none of that. I don't need none of that. Just those chapter right here. This is what you should save. Your review. Yeah, yeah. And the quiz. The practical applications, I still don't think they're really that helpful, but sometimes they're just short questions, and that's cool. But you still have to get the exact match, and sometimes your exact match is an exact match, but the computer doesn't pick up on it, and I hate that, and it drives me insane, just auditing it. But what you should save and what you should concentrate on is your chapter reviews, in your chapter quizzes. This is what's going to help you pass the CPC exam. You go through each one of these. <clears throat> so they're saying that a concussion can cause a patient um, be symptoms. The symptoms could be after a head injury could be cause dizziness and vomiting. So go to your neurological here in, C in CPT book, go to that section where we've got the brain anatomy pictures. Right here, we got all this brain. You've got a lot of white spaces about neurology here. I would start on any of these white pages and start writing a concussion equals nausea, vomiting um, after head injury. Whatever, you've got it here with the head. Then you go to the ICD-10 code for concussion and write in dizziness and vomiting equals concussion. Write it into both. Okay, okay there we go. Again, same thing with this. This one is a brownish pigmentation of the face that happens during pregnancy. So I would go to Intigmatary at the very beginning where you've got that skin layer picture. Write that vocabulary term there. Also go to your female reproduction system. Write that definition there too. Also go to the ICD-10 book and write down those symptoms next to that ICD-10 code that will mean that one. Writing it in those areas are going to be helpful with every single question in their whole course, whether it's a review or a quiz. Taking the time to do that with every single one of these questions, even if they're not ICD-10 or CPT code, will be more beneficial. That's super helpful. Skipping the, the lectures and the code, what, all that other mess is, yeah, that's, that's just gonna make you more confused. The more of these questions you do and the more that you review, the more you'll see why this answer was correct versus the nines. Number one, you'll notice if you go to the L23.9, that's a non-specific unspecified code more than likely. I have no idea, but I think so because of the nine. So it'll, you'll learn about 
what the differences are, what similarities some of the answers have to um, how to look up the differences. This is a 20, a 23, and a 24. I wouldn't even look up the points on these. If these were my questions, since all of them are different, the 20, the 23, the 24, is there two 23s? There's two 23s, but the other one is nonspecific. It's never a nonspecific answer. So just reading what an L24 is without the point zero or then L20 will be able to give you better rationale about dermatitis on the skin. Did that, that was, yeah, they did dermatitis. Yep. And then I would write dermatitis, if you don't know it, in the integumentary question or part of the CPT book with that diagnosis code listed next to it. Laundry detergent equals dermatitis equals L24.4. Then I'd go to L24.4 or whatever point O and go to that in the ICD-10 book and make sure that we put laundry detergent. It'll probably already have dermatitis beside it, but I'd put the reason why from their question. Just working every single question and even noting why the wrong ones are wrong will be so helpful for the, the exam because going through each one of their questions and dissecting it is a lot. That's, that's, that's way helpful. Way helpful. The rest of the course is overwhelming and full of busy work that will keep you occupied. But that is worth saving is every single one of those questions and working them up. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, Twinkle, let's get some practice questions in. <sighs> I hope that is helpful, Heather, but let's get started. If this was one of our questions on the exam, what do you guys think? I've got A, B, C, D, and E. I Bet it's probably going to be a difference between ventricles and atrials. What are we dealing with here? Did we do this one? I can't remember if we did it, but I don't think we did on Monday. We're doing ventricles. Now it's sounding familiar, right? Maybe we're not in arteries. Don't know. We're doing Blood enters through which circulatory system? Are we dealing with arteries, ventricles, veins? It's not, a system is not an aorta. So we can definitely get rid of aorta. Right atrium? That's not a system, is it? Yeah, I get rid of that too. That's more of an item, right? Left ventricle, that's more of an item too, right? Just one particular item. We would be talking about pulmonary veins or arteries. What do you guys think? Yeah, Heather, that's going to be invaluable for you. Just go straight for the quizzes. And, the, and if you fail the exam at the end of the chapter, copy the exam, put it on half your screen, and then bring up the new exam that you're fixing to take. They'll rearrange them, the questions, but 70% of them will be the same. The second time you take it, they'll add in 30 new questions, but 30% new questions, but you can have your old exam up while you're taking the new one. That's kind of cool. But yes, they could not confuse you guys. Just take it one thing at a time. How I would do this is make sure we're doing a system. So that got me to get rid of little parts that are not a system. And then that got me to a 50-50 shot. I'm either in the veins or the arteries. Those are symptoms, systems, I mean. And y'all are right with the B. B is the right answer. And we got a long explanation on that one. All right, so 
for the CPC exam, I definitely do not go to. There we go. I don't go to the question. I recommend everybody take a uh, index card or a piece of paper, fold it in a couple of squares, get you a, something that'll cover up the question, whatever it is, and go straight to the answers. Then we'll do the process of looking for coding irregularities. We'll also <laughs> look for similarities in the codes. Because usually AAPC will give you two answers that are throwaways and two answers that are super close for a reason. Because they want to know something about those answers. And if you know something about the parentheticals or the guidelines about those codes during your exam. Thanks, Ash. That's awesome. You just became the top viewer, actually. Yay. Oh, and I got 1,000 likes. No shares yet, but that's cool. Okay, where is my codes? Which codes would y'all think about keeping? Which codes would y'all get rid of? I see a difference between like the 581s and the 582s. I might go look at those first to see what the header differences are in those. Then I could search my question for that one difference between those two headers if they're under different headers. And then I could at least eliminate two right away. And that would give me a 50-50 shot. So if I go to 581, uh -huh. I'm under manipulations, right? 582s, they're under hysterectomies. So big, big, huge differences between those. So let's see what we're doing with our patient. We are doing a histo. So we can get rid of both the top ones, right? Hopefully. So what's our difference between the 10 and the 0, 0? Total abdominal hysterectomy. Uh-huh. And then our 10 is radical. And we saw the word radical. So our answer is, yep. It's all they wanted to know. A whole lot easier breaking it down and doing it one thing at a time. Hey, PJ. Good to see you. Good job, Jill. All right. Thanks, Ash. Those are awesome. Those are so cool to see flashing around, too. All right. 969. Seth, 977 and 989, do we see any similarities? The two sixes right there or the zeros at the end. Sometimes they all start out differently, but I like all the zeros at the end. But that's only getting me down to just three. I'd probably not do B just because it doesn't end in zero. And just go see what these are. 96040 is what? 960. What header am I under? Not the CPT code descriptor, because I could care less about what that says. I need to know what the header is. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're red. Just depends on what chapter we're under, stuff like that. I'm still trying to get there. Genetic counseling. What is the 97750 under? 50. And you need to look up, not just get to the code, but I need to know a little bit about it. If you're doing the exam on in person, you're going to go on and write in your test booklet 
and just write something so you don't have to go back to that code again. We're doing genetic testing. 7750 is medical and genetic testing. Test and instruments. 7750. What's our header? Yep. We're under test. Test and mesh. Okay, what's 989? 989. If you're at home taking the exam, you're going to be writing on the dry erase board beside you. The same things. Just write A down as this. Uh, B down as possible no, whatever. Or don't write it down. C equals test and mesh. And then 989. 70. Huh. And the header is on the previous page. It's not on the page with the CPT code if you're in the 2022, but we're doing online. So we're just doing online. That's it. Be sure and write it down a little something. That way, you, whatever your one word difference is between those codes, that way you've got it, got it written down either on your dry erase board or right here on your test booklet, then you know you're just searching for any words that match this, that would say something like it, aka terms, whatever. You're not reading the question. You're only doing a word search. And since I already see it starts out with the word online, I'm done with the question. I would just pick D and move on to the next question. The only thing that took us a long time was looking up each one of the codes because there was not a lot of differences. I did get rid of the 13 because it didn't end in the zero. You may not feel comfortable with that. That's fine. Whatever. But as long as you wrote down just a little something, then you can move on to your next question. Yep. Super cool. All right. More anatomy. Which vessel does the tip of the central venous catheter terminate in? Lord, like we need to know that kind of stuff. <laughs> We're not doctors, but they certainly love to ask us obscure, weird crap. Sorry, I was looking at the picture. Everybody at Disneyland today because of Star Wars Day. Oh my goodness. I just I sent that to Betty. I was like, oh, it's so cool. Which vessel does the tip of a central venous catheter terminate in? So we go to our cardiology section and whatever the answer is, I would expect you guys to update it and put it in your vocabulary part of your section and there's quite a few pages you could be writing this in we've either got our big heart we've got um on page 240 or the 239 or we could even are we arteries or veins what are we doing central venous central venous we're veins we know we're venous so our veins are on page 243 that big chart with all the blue stuff. So we could definitely, probably, yep, 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 get rid of those, anything that might be arteries, right? And then we've got it down to just a 50 50 shot. And then we could write this down on that blue page that central venous catheter terminates in equals. And just write your answer there. That way, if it, this question shows up on your exam, you've got it written down, the answer on page 243. So I think it's a great place to write this in. Hey, thanks for the donuts, Micah. I really appreciate it. That is so cool. You became a top viewer too. It's telling me TikTok is just so funny with all these little thingies. 
Watch my wish list. They're making me up late. What did I do? What did I do wrong? Oh, we got a hundred of the calendars. She finished me off. That is awesome. The proceeds for these will um, go to give away free notes for somebody. So let me see. Let me find something that is just one. Is there a one? Oh, that is so cool. The finger thingies? What are the finger thingies? Okay. We updated it. They're making me update because I filled up something. Don't know. There we go. <laughs> You're welcome. My son taught me how to do that. <laughs> I wouldn't even know. I have no idea. I know that um, I have to go. Like it took me months ever since they updated this thing. I'm like, I have no idea where it went to. But I figured out that I can go to settings. And then the balance is right there. And then after a year, this is what we got. We got 2779. And so we're so close. Look at that. Yep. And they're probably adding in y'all stuff right now into whatever y'all are doing. And right now, because I don't have 10,000 followers, I think I get 10%. So whatever 5,000 diamonds is, I get 10% of that. Um, once I hit 10,000, which I'm only like just a few cent, few hundred away from that, I think I get. 40% then, but I'm not in the creator's fund yet, and I don't even think I could withdraw. I don't even know how to do that, but I can hit the withdrawal, but I don't have any account information on there. Yeah, I don't have anything in there. But anyway, I'm so close, and we'll be able to withdraw that and turn that into free tutoring or free notes for somebody, so that'll be cool. Be so cool. I'm really close. How many, how many people? So if anybody could share my account with your friends or whatever. Yeah, I'm 400 away. So that would be cool. Share, share, share. Let's get our answer to this anatomy so y'all can get it written in. Oh, Lord, I should not look at different screens. There we go. Subclavian. Y'all were right. B is your answer. Good Lord, tough question right there. Tough one. So be sure and write the subclavian vein is where a central venous catheter terminates in. I think we'd have to ask the doctor anyway. I don't know. That's awesome. Thank you for the shares. All right. Let's see what our squirrel's gotten into now. What would y'all do here? Do we see any coding irregularities? Let's see. Three, three, two, one, three. What's going on with that one? Can we add another code to it? Since it's down twice, I'm going to concentrate on those two. Anytime you have the same answer down twice and they've either added a modifier or another code to it, well, there's a reason why, you know? Usually, I'm just going to make sure. So our 13, can it go with a 33? 213 says don't use with a bunch of codes. Is 233 in there? Yep, it is. It's under the, the second parenthetical. It says don't use in conjunction with the 233. Three. So it wanted to know if we knew that, that parenthetical. Yep. And you see how it's separated where that 33 three is kind of hidden over there? <laughs> Seems like it to me. But yep. So what's the differences between our 08 and our 13? So. Our 08 is under, okay, we're under replace or new 
permanent pace. The 13, we're under just a battery replacement is all we're doing, because that's what a generator is, battery replacement. And 28, just because we're here and it's close, we're under replace um, the pulse generator. Everybody saying A already without reading the question? Mm -mm -mm. This may not be a question y'all have seen before. So our squirrel has a 10 year status of that mess. What, I picked this question because I hadn't seen it before, but I also wanted to know what the hell does explanted mean? What kind of vocabulary is explanted? Sometimes they get all crazy. Our 33228 is on page 253 and our 213 is on 252 and our 208 is on 251. So three different things. But their vocabulary choices sometimes when they're trying not to say a particular word like replace. It, it fascinates me what they come up with. Um, explanted is definitely a word that I would put down beside whichever answer is correct for this one. So they explanted something and then and the leads are then attached to a new generator. So it looks like they took out a generator and replaced it and put in a new one. Would that be the 13? Or the 28? Because the 08 is... permanent pacemaker, but don't forget about your mama codes. You can't tell what the 13's doing unless you look at the 12. I stress you out immediately. Oh, Tammy. So that's where labeling these things is super helpful. Um, my cardiology notes has that down beside these are 06, 07, and 08, our new and replaced permanent pacemaker. Where are 12 and 13 are generator only? Our 27, 28, and 29 are replace pulse generator. It's kind of like adding in headers. So, and they're saying leads, so it's not one lead, it's multi leads. 13. Has leads, it includes radiology. 28 is multiple leads, includes radiology. Ooh, why is it so dark? Oh, maybe my phone needs charging. My screen looks yellow. Find charger because my screen's turning dark on my end. I hope y'all can see. There we go. Leads, wires, and extract. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So twelve is just a pacemaker pulse is inserted. 
with ex existing leads, but our 27, which is our mama code to our 28, says that it is a removal of a pacemaker with replacement of a pacemaker attached to leads that are already there. So are we inserting or are we replacing and inserting? So 28 is your answer. You're right. Sanchez got it right. Rach got it right. Mean, of course, got it right. <laughs> PJ got it right. Absolutely. So just be sure. That's kind of an interesting vocabulary word. Let's write underneath the 28 um, that we are doing um, explanted. I love that vocabulary room. Also, the word dual matches up with the 28. You'll see that it has dual lead system where our 13. It does have dual too. It's always something. One of the two. It's just because of the re yeah. battery replacement. Mm -hmm. Just looking at my notes. I can, my battery is about to die and I need to plug this up. But for the 27, 28, and 29, I just have them single, dual, multi. But the brackets abound is what's helpful because it's the replace of the pulse generator where the other one was just the generator only. So that's just replacing a battery. They're actually replacing the whole pacemaker. They're not just replacing just a battery. I gotta keep this sucker plugged up or we're gonna lose signal here. So super helpful. All right, my difference is here. Why does this seem so dark? I don't know why. I don't know if it's showing up that dark on you guys, but let's see if I can't lighten that up a little bit. I don't want to see the extent. There we go. All right. And, no, that's not going to be. That's not gonna be. Okay. So right here, I really like the 55 and the 56 because they're super close, right? Let's go run and see what these codes are about. We don't care about what comes after. We need to go to the codes and see what they're doing. So, 36555. What have we got? Ooh, we got our are tunneled versus non-tunneled. So this one is non-tunneled. Non. R56 is just age differences. R58 is tunneled. So that's helpful. And then R569 should be close. We don't have to go very far. I might look at it. Not that I really care, but it's a pit. P-I-C-C. That looks terrible, but it's a P-I-C-C. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, we're doing non-tunneled, right? Non-tunneled. That's what I see right away. Maybe.
So if we keep, and I got rid of the patient's age, that would be helpful because I took it, that out and just did a squirrel. <laughs> Sorry, that won't help y'all pick out the answer, but picking out the answer as far as a, um, whether we're tunneled or non-tunneled, it definitely wouldn't be C or D because it was going to be non-tunneled. And all we did, we needed to know the patient's age. And our patient was over five years old. They were 10 years old. And that's all we needed to know. So it's definitely going to be B. Sorry about that. <laughs> I got to pay attention and leave in the age of my squirrels. <laughs> Another cardiology. Chargers. What have I got on this one? We're still going down. I got some of these new chargers that are like magnets, you know, they, they attach with this magnet. They're easier to plug into, but boy, they charge slow. They're slow at it. All right. What's our differences? I like the two that are 73. One of them has an extra code and one of them doesn't. So I would run to that code first before I did anything else. See if there's any parentheticals that say I can add radiology or not. 365, 73. Oh, we're close already. Where's my 73? I missed it, missed it, missed it. I hate it when they do the, all these pictures. Here we go. So it's a baby code. I can't tell much about that. So I have to go up to my mama code. And we're doing central venous. Pick, no port, no pump, just a difference of age. Are we doing a pick? No port, no pump. Good Lord. We are doing a pick. Are we doing a port or a pump? Flush lumen, still dressing. Nope, no port or no pump. How old is our patient? I probably took that info out. Nope, 72 years old, squirrel. Good. So our difference, it is the 73. Would we add radiology to that or does it include radiology? My 72, I have underneath it that it includes ultrasound radiology. I manually wrote that in. It does include associated, all associated radiology. And we'd have to find that out from the mama code. Yep. 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 So we know our answer is definitely D. Yep. That's all they were wanting to know is if we understood that radiology was included or not. It's super handy dandy. Okay. How long we got, Twinkle? Or am I over? I can't tell. All right. Hmm. I like the six and the seven, but I don't know. Let's go to three, four, seven. Let's see me, Sam, Sam. Three, four, seven. Three, four, seven, oh, six. And 07. Oh, good. Thank you. How much more questions do I have? Yeah, I only have four more questions, so we're going good on time. All right, three, four, three, four. Sorry. Oh, six. Oh, six. And then the 07. <clears throat> so we have a difference between two parents. Even though the 06 is a child code, um, you want to look at your 05 for that one to see what the differences are. And the differences between these are, <clears throat> sorry, the 06 is aortic, where the 07 is ilio. So we've got A's. Or eyes is our differences. 
That's what I got in my notes. So let's see, where are we at? And what are we doing? Do any of our lines go arterial by iliac or are they going ilio to iliac? Because they're all going to end up illy, but we have to figure out which one's which. We've got an aortic aneurysm. renal arteries yep nothing's matching up or is it nothing's ilio or arterial so maybe it is our o1 and o2 let's go see what's going on with those two we've got no rupture versus a rupture did we have a rupture Yep, you see how that matches up with our O1 perfectly? Yeah, I just picked the wrong two codes. But now y'all know what the differences are in O6 and O7 in case y'all saw those on the questions. We got these are ilioiliac. Those up there are are the atrial to the ilioac. So that's cool info, no matter what. But our answers are over here with the O1, no two. And it's just because of that word oh, right there that matches. Super cool. Handy dandy. We just need to know if it ruptures or not. The aneurysm was repaired. They probably. It has not ruptured. So, yep, we're going to do our B, our O1. Good job. Yep. Ooh, definitions. This was a good one because I had, like, what? Which is responsible for the production of germ cells? <laughs> I was like, what in the Hades are they talking about? And whatever the answer is, we can go to, we are definitely in our female reproductive system, right? So I have our female reproduction notes on that page. 437 and I wrote in all the definitions of every body part listed. I even added some based off of what people were saying was on the CPC exam. Like if you don't know what the internal OS is or the external OS, and I'm just saying the words OS, if you don't know that those are part of the reproductive system and where they're at, you need to draw those in because that's been on the exam for a while now, but I would be right here on page 437 and I would write in whatever the answer was to this question right here. I would put germ cells equals, some people are saying ovaries. What does mean say? The book is a CPT book for the 2022 year. You can use 2021, but 2022. Jill saying A, two. Yeah, think about what's different. A uterus is a body part. Endometrium, you know, the lining, fallopian tubes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take our ovum and and that's usually where fertilization happens, those kind of things. But um, what do the ovaries hold? 
that we're sort of born with, you know, and we have until, you know, they're gone. We have all these little cells that we do release into our fallopian tubes and helps with um, having babies and stuff. So, yep, ovaries is correct. Good job. Let's see, where's Mean at? I want to see if she can get this one. This came from Betty. Which is located adjacent to the ham, whatever the ham is. Which one of these is adjacent? Y'all can thank Betty for this one. I know scaphoid. I know that one off the top of my head. What about the rest? Can anybody think about where that might be? Scaphoid's in the shoulder, right? So maybe we're in the, and without Google's help, please, we can go to muscular skeletal section. We can look at our bones and body parts and see if we can't find that particular area. And where's Mean? Oh man. The answer is A, guys. Whatever that let me let me erase that so you can see how to spell it. So we've got two issues. Um where where ham is in the hand. So if we go to our hand, because this is dealing with the carpal tunnel syndrome, if we go to our picture on page 134, the ham my bone is the carpal tunnel bones are listed, but our ham bone, they don't they don't label it and they should. It's right there. So and then we need to have the other one listed, which is the calf, because they're adjacent. They're together like that. They're those two bones that are right there. And we need to label those. We need to stick a pin in that one, draw it out and write out the word. We need to stick a pin in that one and draw it, label it out like that. So that we know which ones are adjacent. And these two are dealing with the carpal tunnel syndrome. And that will help us for sure. Our Prism, whatever, isn't noted either. And there's our lunate. And those are underneath right there. So, y'all want to screenshot that and get those added to that book page, which I didn't even have them down. I do have our distal, middle, and proximal. And this section will be um, available soon. But I'm just working up, taking up the pictures and finishing up a final couple of little things and I found this question from Betty today and I thought it was very helpful. An obscure weird little question to ask. I mean yeah very weird. It's like man we gotta really know all the different names of those. What how helpful is that for a coder, because we're going to be told which bone is involved in the surgery or whatever. Why do we have to know which one's adjacent to each other? I don't know. But they wanted us to know, so we'll figure it out. There's your answer. And you can add that to your notes. All right, Mean, I got another tricky one for you. What about this one? And it's blood, lab and path. She was really good at this section. We were looking for you Monday, too. I got to post that live. It was a really good live. I gotta post that one. In fact, I'm over here. Down. While I'm talking to you guys. What do you guys think about these? These are all proteins. Which one of those proteins is responsible for the osmotic pressure of the blood? When I think of blood, I think of hemo, maybe, you know, like red. 
the white blood cells. I'm thinking with the ERY. I just think of things like that. Fib, uh, no clue. Albumin, that's a good protein too. Hmm, which one does pressure? Think about your prefixes and suffixes, those kinds of things. Creator tools, live center, replace. Oh, no. Oh, that's today. Okay, good. 25.2. I got to download 5.2. <laughs> guessing. Good job. Well, good job of guessing, Jill, because we are dealing with a albumin. It is responsible for blood clotting and, um, not blood clotting, but, um, um, taking care of the osmotic pressure in our blood. I was the, the fib, which is kind of fun, but it takes care of the blood clotting. We don't want to bleed out. It's not any fun. So we need our fib. Our hemoglobin is our buffer that, that buffers. And then our erythro. Um, increases our iron level of all things. I was thinking white blood cells. So very neat. Just talking about the, the, the different proteins in our body. We can add this to our lab and path section in the very front where we're going to be adding in some notes in the beginning. They don't really have any lab, uh, any anatomy drawn in there, but we do have a little bit of blue space up there. We can draw some stuff in. But yep, albumin. And writing down a little something about each one of the proteins anyway, even though they're wrong, I can't tell you how, how helpful that is because just because this is a practice question, they might not ask about albumin next time. They might ask about the Fib one or a hemoglobin. So be sure and write down all a little something about each of them, even if they're the wrong answer. Super helpful. There we go. Thank you for the shares. I got 17 shares. Appreciate that. And 4K likes. That's awesome. Okay. Here we go. More cardiology. But what I noticed right away about this question and what I would take note of, and you know I don't like y'all doing it, but I note that we've got the B2O. It's just a like a popular... And, and one of the diagnoses you don't see very often because it's HIV, right? And it's in three of the answers. One of the answers it's not in. So looking for similarities. Also, I know that Z21 is for no symptoms of HIV and that B20 is for symptoms of HIV. That's a coding irregularity that would not happen, right? We wouldn't have that happen. But I know it's probably going to be an HIV patient, right? I could check my question real quick, but it's probably going to be a difference between the 08 and the 50, just looking at the, at the diagnosis codes. And they're just asking, would I do HIV first or the 59 because they're swapped or would I if, do the 08 over the 50? However you want to look up the answer. Or if you know the guideline tied to that, um, we are dealing with an AIDS patient. That's all I'd need to know. And I'd go to look at the 08 and the 50 and see what my differences are. So 362. Are we cardiology again? Yeah. 326. No. No, are we long? Yeah, they deal with a lot of lung stuff. Yep, yep, yep. 326. 08. We're doing diagnostic if we're 08, and that means we don't really know what's going on, but we're going to do a diagnostic biopsy. <clears throat> or the 50 is definitely a scope surgical or chemical. That's cool. So they're doing an infusion. 
is what they're doing. Okay. So a difference between our diagnostic or actually a procedure to help with something. I know it's usually not diagnostic, but you never know. We are doing a scope, nodes, biopsies. So which one's biopsy? That is underneath our diagnostic. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And we are doing the nodes. So it does look like it's going to be diagnostic to me. What do you guys think? Oh, I got to get down here to messages. Everybody saying B? Everybody saying B? Yep. Diagnostic with biopsies. Yep. That's all there is. The other one. What they're doing there is just trying to, yeah, prevent stuff from accumulating in the chest cavity. So they're not doing any biopsies or anything with that, that 50. So definitely going to be our 08. Super easy. That was easy. Yeah. All we had to do was match the word biopsy and move on. Yep, 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 yep. But helping helps to know a little bit about HIV and you know that you would never code no symptoms with HIV with symptoms of HIV. Those two codes never go together. That is super helpful knowledge to write somewhere, anywhere, and to know that by heart. That'll save you because it's usually on the exam. That is it. That's all I had prepped. Anybody got any questions? I just downloaded Monday's live. It was way cool. I'll post it up and I need to draw for another winner of the um, notes because I think we sold more of those. What's been on the exam in the last 45 days. Also, if you didn't get an update this week in your email box, I sent out the update for that. Um, this week, I got some back. Hold on. Um, whose email am I on? Okay, good. I'm there. I didn't know I had Wayfair onto this account. Good gracious. Um, so right here are those um, what's been on the exam the last. I got 21 replies, but I did get... Like sometimes if y'all are on Etsy and you're on an Apple phone of some sort, it won't give me an email address. It gives me something weird like this kmccreations.com. That didn't go through whatever that was, whoever that is. There's some other things like I just don't have a good email address for you. You can put in whatever you want on Etsy and, and I just don't, I just, um, don't have a good email address for you. So if you've ever purchased what's been on the exam in the last 45 days, I sent out a new update that includes information uh, from 5-2 all the way back. It looks like this. I got rid of last year's information. So um, from Janu from October, November, December, I just started it over with just from January to now what's been on the exam and I got some updated information on usually we get a lot of information on what was on exam A, B or C but I just got some information somebody took exam H so I have their notes of what was on their exam which is the last part I just updated so if you've ever purchased that one that was updated and sent out. And some of it's just raw information. Like, what is that definition? Right there. What is that definition? What is that? Um, some of it is just a CPT code. No idea what the question was about. They just at least had that particular CPT code, which can be helpful. I mean, if we go to zero... 
and 61, you know it was on somebody's exam this weekend. And you can write down some little something about it. You can Google that code, 01360. Google will tell you tons of information about those codes. Um, it'll. You can also Google that code and then put scenario at the end. And then that'll tell you if there is any available, um, if there's any scenarios using that code, 01360. Is anesthesia for an open procedure of the lower third femur. So that's just dealing with one third of the femur. It is an open procedure versus a 61. Hold on, my kids are screaming at me. <laughs> Travis is in there crying his heart out, saying his tummy hurts. But did he eat breakfast? Nope. Did he eat lunch? Nope. Did he come home and eat dinner? Yeah, but he ate a bowl of cereal and he's lactose intolerant. <laughs> like, dude, you didn't eat all day and then you're going to eat a bowl of cereal and suck down all that milk? Yep. You're going to have a tummy ache. Sorry about that. Poor guy. Yeah, I know. She said it was um, exam H. She said, yeah, exam H. Like the letter H. That's what I had in her email. Maybe she meant eight, but I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. But that's cool. At least, I, you know, some of the information is just raw. But if I had even known exactly what CPT codes, that's why the whole point of me buying two um, attempts at this exam, the first one I took was just to go in and I made all these little, all these little pink things are the codes that were on my exam. All I did was highlight was on the exam in person. Went home and studied those codes, found out what my differences were, and wrote some examples down of how you would code those. And then I took the exam at home right after that, after I finished working up all the codes. And that's all I had was the codes. I went and did it that way. Super good um, Exam is from the exam's point of view. What was on the exam? Let's see if I can't. I
Y'all seeing Grandma tonight? Now his belly's hurting up a storm, and James is uh playing a game. <laughs> I guess I can draw a winner here. I feel bad that the boys aren't here, but uh, Travis in there crying away. But I'll draw a winner for another set of the the notes, and then Friday night I'll have everybody's entries in for the two tutorings that somebody won. So who have we got? We got Carmen. Carmen Williams, yes. So you won a free section of my notes, just whatever you want. Just email me or message me on Discord. I think you're in Discord. So let me know uh, which section you want. If you're talking about what is the most valuable, you know, E&M has like the most questions. So that's handy dandy. Other than that, anesthesia has the least amount of questions, only four. Um, cardiology, integumentary, those kinds of things are really cool. I just don't have lab and path and stuff. But yeah, he's just crying. He's hurting up a storm. I gave him some water and some grapes. Hopefully. Yes, I'll be there in just a second. He's. In there, like having labor pains. He's, you know, milk intolerance can just really ruin your your evening, you know. So you got to stay away from milk if you're intolerant to it, dude. We got almond milk, but he won't to touch it. He's got to have the moo moo juice. <laughs> I hope he feels better soon too. I'll have him do the the jump test to make sure it's not appendicitis. Other than that, we'll have to. Just baby him a little bit, make him feel better. But I will be back on to finish working on um, lab and path if I don't end up in the ER. So um, we'll definitely be doing lab and path if I can get back on. And Carmen, um, congratulations. I will see y'all later. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I hope this is helpful. And I just downloaded uh, Monday's live and I'll post it up on YouTube either way. See y'all Friday night.